Okay, so we really need your help. That's coming up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here tonight. It's actually the end of February and things are starting to kind of heat up for us on the new property. One of the things that we talked about in our 100th episode when we first started talking about the fact that we're gonna be moving from this one acre property to a six acre property, we had mentioned that we were gonna ask for your help. Well, today is that day. So what you see behind me here is not 100% to scale, but it's about what the property looks like. So what we have is we have a five acre parcel here, um, and then we have a one acre parcel there. So that's a total of six acres. So it essentially looks just like this. So kind of a, a upside down L. So we know a couple things for sure that we know we're pretty much not going to change. Uh, well, we know one thing for sure is not going to change. That's the positioning of our house because that's actually already going in. Uh, the septic will be right behind it. Um, and then the well, which we've already posted a video there um, on the well, the well's over in that corner. So we already have these. We know they're right up at the front of the house. Uh, one of the things we haven't talked too much about is our barn and shop. So we'll have a metal building that's a couple thousand square feet um, just adjacent to the house. Uh, here at the front of the property. So the way we come into the property is this way. Um, so we know that is going to be there. Um, about the only other thing that we're 99% sure on is we know that we're gonna be raising our pigs on this one acre parcel right here. Outside of that, we're not 100% set on everything else, which is why the rest of this is blank. Um, so let's go over a couple of uh, details uh, as far as the property is concerned. Solar aspect. Um, so for reference, north is that direction. Full sun exposure really anywhere that we are back here. The land itself does have a slope. So from the northern end here to the southern end here, um, we have about a six to eight foot drop is my estimate. So water's gonna flow from this part of the property to this part of the property naturally. That we have a very shallow wash that comes through this part of the property here and down in through that pig acre. Um, we have a wash that's off of our property that comes through here. So it really starts to slope off quite a bit down here. Uh, so we do know that as far as the terrain is concerned. Um, outside of that, this whole area here is almost completely flat with the exception of that grade. A few things that we know we're gonna have. We know we're gonna have fruit trees. We know we're gonna have our grapevines because we love our vineyard. After that, we do know that we're gonna have chickens. And so with our chickens, we're gonna have layers and broilers. Okay, sorry about the audio here, guys. We had a little issue, but what I was trying to say is next thing would be pigs. And then one other thing we're gonna test would be sheep. We are gonna test sheep on this property. And then of course, how can we forget, we are gonna obviously be doing some gardening. Okay, so let's talk a little more specifically on the pig acre. We know that we wanna do rotational grazing in there as far as, or I should say pastured pork, so rotation, rotational uh, paddock type style as far as our pigs are concerned. So we do know we have a wash that kind of comes in through this way. There's kind of a more of a, a, a deeper spot there where that wash comes through, but it kind of comes through that way, kind of comes down this corner of the property, just hits us down there. But we do have this area here in our pig acre, so we want to keep that in mind. We do raise our pigs during the fall, winter, and early spring months. We don't have much in the way of monsoons. It's the tail end of our monsoon season. However, um, we do still have a rainy season in the wintertime, so we need to be cautious when it comes to this portion of this one acre for those pigs. We want to make sure that they can get up out of that water. We're thinking of trying to split this up into at least four sections. What we're thinking is we're thinking that we're probably gonna go with a maximum density, at least to start, of anywhere from five to 10 pigs at any given time. So we won't have more than five to 10 pigs. We usually purchase our piglets at about two months old and we finish them at about seven months. So we're gonna have them for approximately five months. So what we're thinking is we're thinking we're gonna designate about a quarter acre paddock each time we have those pigs that way we can rest that land for at least a year, if not two. Now, as far as the terrain, um, I'm gonna link a video here. One of the first videos we did, we were actually going through and pruning out uh, some of our creosote bushes that were right here on this corner of that property. 
Um, but there's not much here. There's a little bit, there's a lot of flat land and scrub. We get some more creosote. We, down, once we get down into here, we do have some mesquite trees and that kind of thing. So we do have some nice shade in here for them, especially before we do any planting. So we also were trying to figure out what we want to do as far as housing for the pigs. We're thinking of doing something that's more permanent and maybe even link to something on this side of the property, but uh, possibly something uh, linking the two of those together with shelter. Uh, so giving shelter to multiple different types of animals. So what our thought was, and just kind of throw this out at you guys, is to have some type of permanent or semi-permanent housing uh, for them here where they can come back and we can easily get to it as far as feed so we can have feed here uh, we can have water here uh, so we can have water um, and then maybe access of some sort uh, for loading and unloading uh, of livestock maybe down here on the corner it's maybe breaking this up into paddocks so having some type of gate here uh, having a paddock here maybe and having a gate here so it look like that uh, maybe something off to here, having some type of gate here, and then this would be our last paddock, uh, if that makes sense. So we'd have those four paddocks. So at that point, what we could do is we could start out right away, someplace that we can keep them when they're small, maybe keep, you know, because they're about two months old, and we do have concerns with coyotes and things like that. So maybe as they're smaller, we can keep them in a smaller area, give them better fencing uh, and better protection when they're small until they get bigger. What we could do is we could start with either this paddock here as our first rotation, and then maybe come this way. So we could plant down here, plant down here, consider this is our first rotation, this is our second rotation, and they already actually have some shade that's already built in. Especially those of you who have raised pigs before, would love your ideas as far as what you think we might be able to do, uh, maybe something a little bit different, uh, or what might work a little bit better. So uh, one other thing I wanna add before I forget, um, one of the things that we're really trying to incorporate here are a lot of permaculture uh, techniques specific towards obviously building soil because this whole process, we wanna make sure that we're building soil. The idea of course is to green the desert, would love to green the desert. We do wanna try to limit the amount of water as best we can. Uh, we have water, that won't be an issue. However, we wanna limit the amount of water that we're using. So we're really trying to look at different types of permaculture techniques that we can incorporate that are gonna allow us to limit some of our water, capture as much water as we possibly can here on the property and keep it on the property to let it sink down into the ground and really, really, truly build that soil to give just some amazing abundance, not only in what we're seeing, but of course the nutrition in all the food that we're producing. So just wanna thank you for joining us today. You know, if you haven't done so already, hey, subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of things we cover here. This is not normally it. Typically we're talking about fruit trees and livestock and farming and stuff like that. But we'd love it if you would join us. If you haven't seen us on Instagram and Facebook, hey, check us out over there. There's content there that we don't post here on the YouTube channel. We'd love to see you there. And any questions or comments, hey, that's the reason for this video today. We'd love to see those down below via Facebook, Instagram, email, however you want to get a hold of us. We'd love to see that as well. So just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. Specifically, we have a shallow water. <laughs> <coughs> well, this is the first video that you're looking, look, watch it. <laughs> on Instagram, whatever your choice is. Tap, check. <laughs> did you just, did you just sneeze? Or did you, are you spitting at me? Come on. <laughs> All right, this is take like number five or six. Let's do that again.